The next set of questions that I have is from Nitish, Priya, Preeti and Sanjay. Uh, they have brought about some of the questions from computing sciences. So computing and ICT, the first set of question was what is the difference between serial processing and parallel processing. So computers basically do parallel proce uh, processing. So you have one after the other uh, that is the processing uh, sorry uh, one processing and two second processing can go simultaneously not one after the other and a serial processing it goes one after the other so for example calculator you do one process and then you do a next process so that's a kind of serial processing however computers do a parallel processing so one job simultaneously with the other job and the third job so two three functions can go together on a computer and that's what is known as parallel processing microprocessors there are two types CISC and RISC. So CISC is complex instruction set computer and they are mainly seen uh, by the um, microprocessors designed by AMD and Intel. However, RISC which is reduced instruction set of computers are basically designed by ARM. The next is Kibibyte that is a new term that has been released and this Kibibyte says 1 Kibibyte is equal to 1024 bytes. However, for kilobyte, it is a kind of ambiguity that is there. You can use it as 1000 or 1024. But if kibibyte is given, it would be 1024. Then the smallest unit is bit. Four bits make a nibble and you have eight bits that make a byte. So that's something again a kind of basic information that you need to know. Then you have what is sequential access and random access. So random access is available on hard disk so I can pick out any information from the hard disk but let's say you have a tape uh, tape recorder and you have a tape that's being played so you would have one song after the other that would be played and that would be a kind of sequential access now I guess from your generation many of you might be there who have not seen that kind of tape uh, so uh, if you have you could understand it better that sequential access is basically a tape so you have uh, one uh, song that would run and then you would have the next song that would run so that's a kind of sequential access what is firmware so firmware is basically a software that is embedded in the hardware and it is known as firmware the next is pci pci are peripheral component interface uh, basically on the motherboard you can add the graphic cards or any other slots that are there and that's what is with the help of pci now uh, you have dvd a follow-up of DVD is known as Blu-ray. Note that Blu-ray is not a follow-up of SSD. SSD is a hard disk and follow-up of uh, the SSD is 3D X point. That's a recent technology and therefore very, very important. The next question that I received was a difference between warm boot and cold boot. So warm boot as we say is basically occurs on a restart. Cold boot is also known as hard boot and occurs after the computer is uh, on basically from a position of turn off so when you are turning on the computer you have the cold boot the next question is a very very interesting question read this question very carefully in a train there are four people and four names and four professions i am having one person with each of the occupations Brakeman has no relatives. So let's first do the names and then I'll do, uh, sorry, first do the occupation and then I'll do the names for this. So you have brakeman, conductor, fireman and engineer. Now brakeman has no relatives. So he does not have any relative. Uh, alpha, beta I'm leaving for now. Engineer and fireman are brothers. So these two are brothers. Then I have fireman is not a conductor's uncle. So fireman is not the conductor's uncle and conductor is not an engineer's uncle. So conductor is not the engineer's uncle. So what could be the option? Now you definitely have one uncle because alpha uh, is gamma's nephew that is given. So there is one uncle that is there. Now who can be the uncle? He does not have any relative. So no relative for B. So B would remain independent. E and F are brothers, so they cannot be uncle. Neither E can be a uncle of F nor, nor F can be uncle of E. So that situation is also ruled out. Then I have seen fireman is not conductor's uncle. So conductor can be uncle of fireman. That could be one case that could be possible. The next could be engineer can be uncle of 
conductor. So there are two cases that could be there. Now I have to see which case applies. So when I am saying conductor is an uncle of fireman and fireman and engineer are brothers, it's not necessary that this conductor would be uncle of this engineer also. However, when I am saying this engineer is an uncle of conductor, okay, and this engineer and fireman are brothers, then fireman also should be uncle of conductor. That's no way necessary because you already have fireman is not the uh, conductor's uncle. And since it's the brother, Okay, uh, you uh, let's say consider yourself to be in a position. So if you are uncle of someone, it's not necessary that your brother would also be his uncle. But if those two are brothers, in that case, it's definitely necessary that their uncle would be the same. So if, if I am there and someone is my uncle, my brother's uncle would also be, he would also be my brother's uncle, but that won't be the case vice versa. So when I'm saying this engineer is the conductor's uncle, so let me put myself as engineer and I am conductor's uncle, for example, what would happen is it's not necessary that my brother would also be his uncle. My brother would have some other relationship. I could be from a maternal or a paternal side. So it's not necessary that my brother would also be his uncle. So, <coughs> engineer would be the conductor's uncle is the true statement and when I say engineer is the conductor's statement, uh, sorry, conductor's uncle, so engineer is the uncle of conductor, then I would have person alpha as gamma's nephew. So, gamma's nephew, so who would be the gamma here? So, gamma would be the engineer and alpha would be the conductor. So I have alpha as conductor and gamma as engineer in only one of the choices and the choice which have alpha as conductor and gamma as engineer would turn out to be the correct choice. A very interesting and a kind of a little tricky question that has been asked. The next question was what is the uh, global environment outlook report? It's again very very important global environment outlook report is being launched by United Nations environment program. It had been launched in 1995. The idea was that it has two components. The first is a kind of cross sectional and a participatory approach. The ne next was a periodic review of the various state of the environmental situation. So far five reports have come up. There are regional assessment reports that are there and the sixth report is on its way. However, there is no fixed duration in which you have a kind of global environment outlook report that is released. Casual re uh, research. What is a casual research? So casual research is also known as explanatory research. We try to understand a cause effect relationship under casual research. So again, it's very, very important and it's not causal. So sometimes there is spelling mistake. So make sure it's casual research, which is also known as explanatory research and talks about uh, basically cause and effect relationship. The next question was, is relational research a part of experimental research? So relational research is totally separate. Relational research is basically you are trying to establish relationship between two things. So it can be by experiment, it can be by correlation, it can be by observation, interview or any other thing. It's not necessary that a relational research is a part of experimental research. Clear? The next question is how to find a difference between a discrete and a continuous type of data. So discrete data, you have all data that are exclusive. So male, female, young, old. So that's a kind of discrete data whenever. However, when I say continuous, it could be like weight. So 20.4 uh, 20 kgs, 20.5 kgs, 20.6 kgs, 21 kgs. So it's a kind of continuous data that I have. And that's a basic difference on between the discrete and a continuous data that can be understood by seeing the underlying physical quantities. The next was the question, what is the difference between linguistic determinism and linguistic relativism? Linguistic determinism emphasizes the fact that different languages have different thought processes. So people originating in different languages have different thought processes in mind and that's what is linguistic determinism. However, when I say linguistic relativism, it's basically a person speaks when he's trying to say something, his speech has an influence from the language 
or that language that he speaks has uh, influence on his understanding of the concept and this idea of relativism was laid down by Sapphire Wolf. It is also known as Wolfian hypothesis or Sapphire Wolf hypothesis and it basically says the language is influenced by the thoughts or the culture in which it is spoken. The next question that I had was why a thesis statement is an assertion. So assertion means basically a statement which you believe to be true. So when I say a statement which I believe to be true is assertion, I am trying to prove it and therefore it's a statement for the thesis. So that's correct here. The next question was in what cases a bill can lapse? A very important and an interesting question. If the bill, bill is pending in Rajya Sabha and has not been passed by Lok Sabha, but the Lok Sabha has dissolved, then this bill will not lapse. Okay. The second case is if the bill is pending in the Lok Sabha or passed by the Lok Sabha, but is pending in the Rajya Sabha and the Lok Sabha is dissolved, then the bill would remain in place for six months uh, to be rejected or that does not mean that the bill is going to lapse. The next case is when the bill gets lapsed due to dissolution of the Lok Sabha, it uh, gets a case when there is no joint sitting that is called. So those are the three cases for the bill lapse. The next is validity and reliability are independent. Does validity ensure reliability? Now validity means what we suppose to measure. So we have covered the classes separately on validity. Uh, reliability and standardization of the test. So refer the three classes, you will have the concepts again. So reliability basically says if you are doing a similar test at two different times or repeating the test, you would get more or less the similar results. Validity says you are trying to measure what it is supposed to measure. Okay. So a valid result might not be reliable, a reliable result might not be valid. So they are independent. Okay. The next is who can bring in an ordinance? So again a question from political science. Ordinance are the laws that are promulgated by the president in approval or in consultation with the cabinet. Now this can be issued only in the case when the parliament is not in session. So when the parliament in, is not in session, a president can ask uh, ordinance to be passed and this helps basically to take immediate legislative actions that are required. The next is a very uh, dynamic topic has been in news a lot, the collegium system. So collegium system is basically regarding the appointment of the judges of Supreme Court. So what happens is this is formed by the Chief Justice of India and four senior most judges of the Supreme Court. Now the benefits and the drawbacks. The benefit is the collegium system keeps it independent from the legislative and the executive. So judiciary remains independent and the selection of the judiciary is carried by the judiciary itself. However, it was in news recently because under criminal cases, it has to be passed by the executive. So many of the uh, cases or the names are kept pending in the executive. They are not passing it and therefore it proves a kind of biasness towards appointment and to rule out that there was a kind of issue regarding the collegium system in India. So collegium is a system to recommend the appointment and the transfer of judges. Uh, the committee formed is by the senior, uh, the chief justice of India and four senior most judges of the Supreme Court. A very very interesting question that has been asked here. If whole of the population uh, is in different parts, number of units of each part that are to be included in the sample are fixed, then which sampling method is used? So I have a unit, the hole that is there and from each I have fixed number that I have to pick up. So when from each I have fixed number that I have to pick up, it is a quota system as simple as that. So the answer here is quota because from each I am picking out a fixed number and therefore we call it a quota system. The next question again very very important for a population with infinite finding, fin infinite size which sampling method is used. So let's say if I have stars I have to pick out stars what would be the best method. So a star is an example of infinite sample size. So infinite sample size the best example would be random sampling so just randomly uh, picking out 
uh, few of the stars would help me in the sampling. So random sampling would be the most appropriate sampling. Now you have a kind of formula that's given here to pick out a uh, sample size from an infinite population that's there. The next question, a very important question again, uh, you have three types of questions that are asked, start, unstart and short notice question. The start questions are oral questions, unstart questions are written questions and short notice questions are questions that require urgent information or an urgent notice. So under this, what we need to understand is the start questions you have the supplementary questions that could be asked. Since they are oral questions, you could have, after a person speaks, you could have a supplementary question or an add-on question that could be just brought in. But for unstart questions, you cannot have a supplementary question that could come up. So that's a very important thing that you need to remember here. The last question that I have received was, what is attention motion? So attention motion is a motion that is being introduced by the member to call uh, to a notice a issue which is of urgent uh, importance or which is very very important for uh, public importance. So solving that issue and bringing that into notice is what is attention motion or calling attention. So that was the set of questions that we have covered. I would welcome more questions if any. So just drop down in an email at contact us at exam race or you can just uh, leave those in the comment. We'll be happy to bring in doubt resolution se uh, sessions for you.